Welcome to the Tom's River Fire Academy Basic Pump School Lesson Number Two Pressure Gauges. This program can be used as a primer for those of you who will be taking the Basic Pump School class at the Fire Academy or as a quick refresher for current pump operators. For those taking the Pump School for the first time, the objective of this lesson is to gain a basic understanding of the pressure gauges that you see when you look at the pump panel. In this lesson, we will briefly describe the two types of pressures that we deal with as pump operators. The two types of pressure gauges that we use on the pump panel. We will discuss the compound gauge that is used to measure pressure on the intake side of the pump. We will also discuss the pressure gauges that register pressures on the discharge side of the pump. We must know that water has weight, and the weight of a column of water exerts a pressure at the base of that column of water. This pressure is referred to as pounds per square inch, or commonly seen as PSI. As a rule of thumb, if we take a column of water and put a pressure gauge at the base, we will see a pressure reading in PSI. The PSI on the gauge will be approximately half the height of the column of water. If you look at the example, you can see that the column of water is 100 feet high and the pressure gauge at the base is 50 psi. This concept becomes important when we need to pump water uphill or to upper floors through fire hoses. We need to cancel out the head pressure created by the weight of water. The weight of water is also referred to as elevation. Another concept we need to consider is pressure. One type of pressure we deal with is known as static pressure. That means that there is no water flowing in our system. If you look at the example, you can see that there is no water flowing in our system. The, P the 50 psi reading on the pressure gauge is referred to as static pressure. During pump operations, when we connect to a water source, such as a fire hydrant, we always want to look at our compound gauge and see what the pressure is before we start to flow water. In this slide, we can see the pressure gauge attached to a fire hydrant during a flow test of a water main system. Since there is no water flowing, we are reading a static pressure reading on the gauge. The second pressure that we deal with is called residual pressure. Residual pressure is the pressure on the pressure gauge after water is flowing through our system. The residual pressure is always less than the static pressure. If you look at the example, you can see that the gauge on the hydrant has dropped from 50 psi down to 35 psi once the hydrant was opened. When we are operating the fire pump, we always want to have an idea of the pressure drop between the static and the residual pressure once we put our hose line into operation. This pressure drop is always going to be recorded on the compound gauge. In this slide, we can see that water is flowing. The pressure reading on the gauge would be referred to as residual pressure. As pump operators, we use gauges to provide the required pump pressures to various hose lines to supply the required fire flow in gallons per minute. When we look at our pump panel, we will always see two gauges that are larger than the rest. One gauge is called the compound gauge, and the other is known as the main pressure gauge. To understand these gauges, we must understand that water enters the pump on what we refer to as the intake side of the pump. The compound gauge registers the incoming water pressure. The other gauge, the main pressure gauge, measures the pressure on the discharge side of the pump. When you look at the pump panel, you will see smaller gauges. 
These gauges correspond to a specific discharge outlet where a hose line can be connected or hooked up to. When we pull out the discharge handle, we see a pressure on the corresponding discharge gauge. Because the main pressure gauge is reading the pressure at the center of the pump, this gauge will always read higher than the smaller discharge gauges. This is a result of friction loss in the pump piping. Getting back to the compound gauge, there is only one compound gauge on the pump panel. We only need one gauge to measure incoming water pressure. The compound gauge serves two purposes. As previously stated, it records incoming pressure. When we hook up to a fire hydrant, the incoming water pressure shows on the compound gauge. When we draft water from a water source, such as a lake, pond, or river, we need to determine that we are creating a vacuum in our pump. When we draft water, we use the compound gauge to show that we are creating a vacuum. These pressures are below zero and are referred to as inches of mercury or vacuum. If you look at the gauge, you will see zero and below that, the number 30. This refers to 30 inches of mercury. When you look at most pump panels, you will notice that all the gauges seem to have the zero to 30 increment on the gauge pace. To the best of my knowledge, it appears that the gauge manufacturers produce all their gauge faces alike. This uh, to save money. Just realize that there is only one compound gauge per pump panel. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please contact me. Once we start the hands-on training, these concepts become much clearer.